Hey guys, Michael at iBlock. Today I want to talk to you about setting up your Pro UTV suspension system. Our included instructions tell you where to set the spring seat, the crossover rings, and the ride height, but everyone's driving style, vehicle weight, and tire size can vary. So I want to get into how we can make little changes to set up your UTV for you. One of the keys to understanding how to set up your UTV is first understanding how a dual rate setup works. So we've got this one here, this top spring we'll refer to as the secondary spring, and this bottom spring we will refer to as the main spring. Now when they're combined before they touch the crossover ring, the rate is actually much softer. So for example, if you have a 200 pound spring over a 200 pound spring, the combined rate is actually 100 pounds. So it's not always half when the rates are different, there's a formula for it. But the important part is to understand that it's much softer than the rates separately. So we have that softer initial rate, and then when this slider contacts this crossover ring, we're gonna transition into the final rate. So finding the point where that transitions is the key to balancing comfort and bottoming resistance on your UTV. So before we get started, we wanna get an idea of where our ride height is at right now. So parked on flat level ground, from the ground to the center of the radius rod bolt, looks like we're at 440 millimeters. First thing that we're gonna talk about here is spring seat height. So the listed spring seat height for this vehicle is 85 millimeters. That's from the bottom of the reservoir crossover to the top of the spring where it makes contact with the spring seat. Now on this particular vehicle, we measured from the ground to the center of the radius rod in the back for our listed ride height and our instructions and found that we're a little low. And that's because of this added piece of tubing to the cage as well as the spare tire. So we wanna go ahead and add a little bit of preload to the shock to bring that ride height up. So we can do that by moving this spring seat down on the shock, keeping in mind that moving the spring seat down at the shock results in a different number at the wheel. And that's because of the motion ratio. So on this vehicle, the pivot point and the shock are mounted about halfway to the wheel and that's gonna get us about double. So if we move the shock five millimeters down, we're gonna get about 10 millimeters at the wheel. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment. If we wanna make adjustments to this setup, we need to move the crossover ring. Rolling the crossover ring down towards the slider will bring the final rate in sooner. This will provide more bottoming resistance, but the trade-off is less travel in the initial rate and less comfort. And the opposite, if we roll the crossover ring up away from the slider, this will give us more travel in the initial rate increasing comfort over small bump and chop, but you lose some bottoming resistance. So we wanna find the combination that suits your driving style and your needs. We'll start by making the ride height adjustment. On some vehicles, depending on the vehicle or the preload, it can be done on the car. On this particular one, we're gonna go ahead and start by taking the shock off. So we've got our shock in here. I have it in a vise. You can do it on a bench, a vise, maybe in a spring compressor, but we're gonna do it here today. Remember we had 85 millimeters from the reservoir crossover to the spring seat spring contact. So we're gonna check that right now. We're at 85 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and add five millimeters at the shock to try and get our 10 millimeters at the wheel. We're using this nice IBOC tool. And we'll just put some revolutions in it. Let's check out where we're at. We're about 88, need a couple more millimeters. Cool, so that puts us right at 90, right where we wanna be, that 85 millimeters plus the five millimeters. All right, so our height's adjusted on here, now we're ready to put the shock back in. So with the shock back in, we made our spring seat height adjustment. We can also make crossover ring adjustments at this point. So we talked about earlier, moving the crossover ring down closer to the slider is gonna increase your bottoming resistance, bringing that final rate in sooner, and rolling the crossover ring up is gonna increase comfort, lessening bottom and resistance. So to make these adjustments, we just need a small Allen. We're gonna go ahead and loosen up the crossover ring. And then with vehicles still off the ground, we can make adjustments to the crossover ring. So you're always gonna wanna measure. Um, I like to make changes in 10 millimeter increments. So we can move in 10 millimeter increments. Right now, we're at 145 millimeters. We were at 150, but we moved that upper spring seat five millimeters. So I'm gonna roll this down 10 millimeters and we're gonna be at 155 millimeters. So if your threads are clean and you do the maintenance on your car, it should be pretty easy to make these adjustments. So right now we're at 155. I'm gonna turn it so it's easiest to get to these and we can tighten these up. Make sure you do snug them up pretty well. Don't strip them, but uh, 
you know, the vibration can cause them to come loose if they're not all the way tight. So we adjusted the spring seat height. We rolled the crossover rings down 10 millimeters. I think we're all set up for the added tubing and the spare tire. So the last thing we wanna do is put it on the ground and check the ride height and make sure we got the gain that we were looking for out of the spring seat adjustment. We're gonna pull it out, pull it back in, scrub it so we can get accurate ride heights. So we've made all of our adjustments. Next, we wanna double check the ride height and see if we got that 10 millimeters that we were looking for. So we started at 440 millimeters of ride height from the ground to the bolt, and we're looking for 450. So let's check it out. So from the ground to the center of the bolt, you can see we have 450 almost exactly or right where we want. In addition to making spring seat height adjustments, crossover ring adjustments, you can also make shock adjustments. So our instructions include notes on where to set your shocks based on the testing that we did with our kits. But again, your driver preference may vary or your terrain. Turning the compression adjuster to the right adds compression damping and closes it, while turning it to the left opens it and takes away compression damping. By adding compression damping, you are increasing your bottoming resistance, but it can also add harshness where not desired. So you want to play with it and find a balance that suits your driving style. Taking notes is one way that helps. You can keep track of the changes that you make and go backwards if needed. To check out the Pro UTV products that we offer for your vehicle, go to ibock.com forward slash UTV or give us a ring.